So one of the things I would like to do, I have this online cover design tool to make book covers, which works really well for eBooks and it has a lot of different um, settings and sizes and such, but it's not totally obvious how to make full print covers. So I'm gonna try to show you how to make a full print cover with this free online tool. Um, the challenging part is only that I can set a custom size and I can set any, there's some of these pre-built sizes. It's the, the, this ebook cover that I made is set at six by nine and this is six by nine at 300 DPI. So it's 1800 by 2700, which is a good standard size for an ebook cover for Amazon or Kindle or other um, online ebook stores. To make it a print cover, I can set the width and the height to anything. So I can make the background document size perfect for a print cover, but I have to convert from inches to pixels. And so I'm going to need to use an online um, converter or calculator just to figure out what my width should be and what my height should be. So if I'm going to do this for CreateSpace, I was just going through, I made a create space full print cover here and I just used this template that I downloaded from um, create space. And the nice thing about the template is that it's just perfect and ready to go. The width, the spine, everything's just how I want it because they did the calculation for me. But even if I was going to make my own cover and I didn't use the template with create space, I would have to first calculate everything by myself. And the way that you do that, they have instructions here on CreateSpace's site, but basically for a six by nine cover, the width is always going to be 1225 plus the spine. So this is six inch width plus 0.125 trim on one side and another 125 trim on the other side, which gives you 12.25, that's, that's the total width for a print six by nine cover, um, plus the spine. And then also 9.25, um, which is just, that's this is a nine inch cover with 1.25 trim on the top and on the bottom. So you get 9.25 this way, 6.125 this way, 6.125 this way, which is 12.25 plus this middle section, the spine. That's the only tricky part that you have to um, calculate. So if I was gonna add a new one, and I was trying to figure this out, it would be 12.25 by 9.25. That's just the basic dimension, but I'd have to also change the spine width. And I'd wanna make sure this is set at 300 DPI. So for the spine width, I'd look over here again at um, the spine calculator and the spine width for cream paper is the page count times 0 0.0025. Cream paper is better for most fiction. White paper is okay for textbooks or some nonfiction, maybe self-help. But um, for most books, cream paper is a little bit warmer and nicer. So I'm actually gonna pull up my calculator And I would say if I have a maybe 300 page book, I have to multiply that by 0 0.0025, and that gives me 0 0.75. So that's the spine width of my book. So if I go back to this new document I was making, I'd have to add 0 0.75 here, which is the spine, and then that would give me 13 inch total width. I'd say, okay, so this is my new document. The problem if I just make something like this is that it doesn't have the guides and I can't tell exactly where the spine is. Um, but what you can do, um, I've taken these left and right pages. All I did was I took a normal um, template that I got from template, uh, got from CreateSpace, and I just cut off the right and left side so that I took out the spine 
and I just cut off these sides. And the reason I did that is because now I can drag this layer in here and just move on to this side and take the right and move it to this side. And because I've calculated this, I know that my spine is just perfect for my page count. And I can just use this as a basic guide. The thing you want to be a little careful of if you do it this way is that um, on the CreateSpace template, they show you on the spine, there's a little bit of space where you're not allowed to have text. CreateSpace is really picky about having text on the spine because they don't want you to have text wrapping around the edges. So they have these extra pink margins here. They're really small, but they're there. So if I make a template this way and I just use these right and left sides, then it's not showing me that little bit of pink on the inside of the spine, which shouldn't be a big deal, but it just means I need to be careful when I'm adding text to my spine. Hold on a sec. So if I'm adding text in a template I made this way, I just have to make sure there's a little bit of space on both sides of the text. At least this much space, maybe a little bit more. Um, what will happen if you're too close to the edge here, then CreateSpace will just tell you your spine, your sp the spine text went over the margins and you have to redo it. So I would actually make my spine text smaller just so that I make sure there's enough space here. It's not going to be an issue. I'd say at least that much. I could also um, just do this and then stretch it. But that's kind of a pain. It's probably not worth doing it that way. But the reason I'm telling you all this, you could be doing it in Photoshop. If you're doing it in Photoshop, it's a little bit better to calculate the width exactly this way, but you can probably just use a template, even if it's a couple pages off because it, CreateSpace doesn't calculate perfectly. They kind of round up or down. Um, if it's a couple pages off, it's still gonna be fine. And it's a lot easier. But if you want to, if you don't have Photoshop and you wanna make your own cover and you need to calculate the full cover width using my online program, which is here. It's a little different because I have to figure out the pixel width, which is here. And if I had Photoshop, that's not so bad because, oops, in Photoshop, I can just see the width and the height. So I've already calculated this is 13 inches by 9.25 inches. That's with the 0.75 spine width that I calculated and I added in already. Um, in Photoshop, I can just see the pixel dimension for 300 DPI. I can see it, it's right there. But if you don't have Photoshop, you're gonna have to use something like an online pixel converter. I found one that may not be the best one, but um, I'll look for others. This is on pixel Easer, pixelizer.com. There's a pixels to inches converter. And so I would just do my calculation and I would know that I need 13 inches by 9.25 inches and it gives me 3,900 by 2775, which is the same as I get in Photoshop. So I know that that's right. If you don't have Photoshop, it's fine. But what I can do, now that I've been able to calculate my dimensions and use this online converter to get these numbers, I can go to my online graphics tool and just put in these numbers. Uh, 
and that gives me something like this. So I know that already these, this width, this dimension is perfect for my print cover that I'm going to make. So this is a ebook cover that I was working on before, and all I did was I can't change the size this way. Um, I can't go back this way. But all I did was change from the six by nine size, and I just added, I just changed these numbers, which changed the canvas, but left my book cover in the same place. What I'm going to have to do now is move all this stuff over. And it's going to be a little bit tricky. What I probably would actually want to do is I would have, because when I made this ebook size, this ebook, there were some extra layers that kind of went over a little bit. This is an old picture. I'd want to save just the art by itself as a JPEG and then upload it into this new template that I made for print. And then I can just put all my text back in the right space. And even though I know that this book cover template is kind of the right size, I would still want to upload this right and left just so that I can make sure I get everything in the right place. So I'm going to go to add image and I'll find this left and right. I'll upload these on my site so that you can download them and use them. I'll put them somewhere in a package. And so I just want to make sure this lines up. There we go. And I'm going to add the other one on the right side. You got to make sure that you line it up just right. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to just shift it around and put it exactly where you need to go. See, I still have a little bit of, you can see if you zoom in, it's not totally against this um, outside layer and it has to be or else my spine will be off. So I have to keep moving it with the arrow key until I get to that edge. You'd want to zoom in and make sure that these are really just right. So there's a little bit of overlap on this side. So I want to go back a little bit. So if you zoom in well, you'll be able to... Oops. You'll be able to see if you see here's some more space. There's a gap down here. So I'll use the arrow key and make sure this is lined up. So now things are pretty good. I can hide those layers later. But for now, they'll help me to kind of put things in the right place. And then I would just finish. You'd have to put something here on the spine in the back. You'd upload a new layer for that. Then you just add another text box. For the back, I mean, you don't want something just plain white. Um, I'll probably make another video now finishing off the back and spine because you want to add up uh, another texture or layer or something to make it look better. So it's not just plain white. And then you're going to want to use a really simple font on the back. Almost always you want to use a serif font for long body text. So in this tool, the best serif fonts 
and they look for a good one. I mostly added a lot of kind of fancier fonts for book titles, um, but there are a couple of simple serif fonts in here too. Here's Baskerville. Baskerville is a pretty safe, simple serif font. I'm going to make that a lot smaller. The sizing on here is difficult because you might make it bigger or smaller like that. Anyway, so I could start, and I'd want to have this um, fill the width, basically, from left to right. I'm going to start a new video and finish this up with the spine in the back, because that's a little bit different and talking about what you need to put on the back of your cover. But this is how you would calculate so that you can make a print cover that's exactly the right size for your book. That's how you'd calculate the spine. Okay, thanks.